Let's talk about how fashion companies are using data to drive their businesses forward. Um, I'm here with two speakers who have very different perspectives on the industry. I've got Olivier Zimmer, who works at Google from New York, and um, he recently published a report on beauty trends about how uh, the man bun is the new trend. Exactly, yeah. Um, is that why you're, uh, you're growing your hair out? That's why I'm trying to grow my hair, indeed, yeah. <laughs> and we've got Heidi Zak here from innovative bra brand uh, Third Love, and uh, she's working with uh, data to get a uh, fit, um, which is a very exciting and very interesting area. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. So one of the things that makes us really unique at Third Love is we have an app that lets a woman size herself for a bra using her smartphone. So instead of having to go into the store and getting fit by an older woman with a measuring tape, you can simply take two photos into a mirror and we're able to calculate the size of your body in relationship to the phone. Um, what's incredibly exciting about that from a data perspective is at an aggregate level, we collect all this data about women's bodies and we use that to actually design product. So as a lot of you know, in typical fashion industry, there's the use of fit models and grading. We actually use real women's measurements to design the product from the length of the bra strap to the center front gore to make product that fits women better. Okay. And Olivia, can you tell me about how you're using data at, at Google for, fashion, for the fashion industry? Uh, yes, uh, so definitely. Uh, so one of my job at Google is actually uh, to be an analyst. And uh, we're looking at uh, search queries. Uh, which is really a good way of measuring actually uh, consumer intent. Uh, the main thing that we are doing is trying to understand the present. So somehow in real time, we are like, able to understand what people are like, searching for. Um, one of the main works that I actually contributed to is really like this uh, fashion trends report. So trying to see what is trending, uh, what is actually like, seasonal in the world of fashion in the US. And I mean, I think that data at the moment and the way that you're using it and the way that we're using it at WGSN is very good in season and it's about looking at iterative changes and about uh, maximizing a trend in season. But then how I think that there's still a lack is when the big changes come in, say for instance when a new trend hits, how do we use data to kind of predict those bigger, bigger shifts in the industry? So I think it's important when uh, talking with uh, trends uh, to be able to differentiate um, micro trends and macro trends. Uh, the way we see like micro trends, uh, it's really like those quick, uh, fast uh, changing behaviors uh, that people can have. Um, it's often like internet memes or even like buzz that you can see uh, in the fashion industry. Uh, one of the big things that we picked up, for example, uh, this year was, um, you know, like uh, the, the gold and white dress or the black and blue. So, you know, we, we could see it like everywhere and then like suddenly like, oh my God, what's going on there? And at the same time, we really have like macro trends, uh, which is going beyond just like the product. It's almost like understanding human behavior or human truth. This is like how we call it. So at leisure, for example, would be a good way of seeing like macro trends. Uh, people are trying to become like more healthy. And consequently, we do see fashion brands that are like diversifying themselves in trying to, uh, in going into that direction. Uh, Tory Burch and Tory Sports, for example, is a really good example of a, of a brand that is like surfing on these new trends. Okay, and I mean, can we talk a little bit about some of the, oh, sorry guys. Um, can we talk a little bit more about how uh, other points within the fashion industry where, um, where data is being used? I mean, Heidi, are you using it through sort of like the supply chain and logistics process or is it just through product design? Yeah, I think the other thing we're able to collect from a data level is real-time data on size selling and buying, which is able to, um, we're able to use in our supply chain to do quicker term production. So our, our, our turns are under three months, which is really quick for a lingerie brand. Um, and I think other examples of data and using that well um, is really thinking about the customer life cycle or the customer journey and where somebody's entering. So as a brand, one of the things that we really look at is where are we capturing that customer? Is that customer coming through a Facebook ad? Is, it coming, is she coming through a referral from a friend? Is she coming organically? Because her um, journey and her relationship with Third Love as a brand is different. And so we use data to understand what does a woman want to learn about the company? When is she most likely? likely to purchase, what does she want to know, um, what, you know, what may impede her from purchasing, and use that data to actually inform how we talk to her through emails and other touch points. So, yeah, I mean, 
the, the way I see it is really like uh, if you take the, the fashion value chain, you can somehow decompose it into like three big components. Uh, you have the creation process, uh, you have like the buying and manufacturing process, and then you have like the marketing process. And I think that data can really like play a big role in those like three uh, aspects of things. When it comes to uh, creativity, uh, data can really like help uh, shifting, uh, d like I would say, uh, designers and the inspiration, uh, help them taking better informed like decision. When it comes to like buying and man manufacturing, we do see a lot of things happening right now in like optimizations of like logistic chains, for example. And then of course, like marketing is a big thing. A lot of effort is being done at optimizing right now uh, the shopping and the user experience. Um, that's like one big theme. And I think also like recommendation engine or recommendation in general is for sure a big discussion that is right now being influenced by data. And I mean, you just recently moved into bricks and mortar retail with uh, your partnerships. Um, how are you using, are you getting data back from that and is that influencing your, your decisions yeah. and your business at the moment? Good question. Um, we're, we're in our first um, in our first retail partnership and one of the things that's been interesting about the data is to see how um, the size selling is. So one of the things that makes us very unique is that we offer half sizes. So we have an A and a half cup, B and a half cup, so these sizes between traditional bra sizes. And we find in our online business that about 40% of our customers fall into these half sizes that she can't find anywhere else, which is, is pretty fantastic for both the customer and for us. And we've actually found through the brick and mortar that the, that actually holds true. It's even stronger. So those different sizes, which we didn't know, you know, would a wom woman understand what a half size is in store? You know, I'm not there to talk to her to tell her um, what a half size is, but women are smart, they figured it out, and it's, it's, we're seeing the same data trends, so that's interesting. And I mean, your website actually goes into a lot of detail about sort of cup shape and, and breast shape and stuff like that. How does that translate to the in-store experience? Because mm -hmm. again, that, that sort of information, it's a really ed like educational experience. How, how, do you, how do you take that across? We rely on the expertise of the in-store bra <laughs> fitter, right? Because these women are experts. Um, and so we really rely on that. And then hopefully a woman who buys in-store comes back, purchases online again with us and can get more education if she wants on the website. And I mean, what data points are being used well throughout the supply chain and what data that's available in sort of within businesses and, and more broadly is, are being well and what could be done better? So to, to your point, and, and I think that uh, the big revolution that is like happening right now is that uh, offline and online are not separated anymore. Uh, we all have like a supercomputer in our pockets. It's mm -hmm. like a mobile phone, yeah, exactly. And we use like buzzwords, you know, but omnichannel is definitely like the new thing that is like happening right now. Um, that is, I think, the source of like data uh, that is that should be leveraged more by uh, retailers and brands in general, because this will really like permit them to connect what's happening in the stores and what's happening on a website uh, also. Okay. And in terms of uh, what sort of information is being used uh, to, to connect up the experience and what data you can use better? Um, I think it goes back to using data quicker and more more real time. I think a lot of um, fashion brands and retailers there tends to be this like lag time, um, and so I think what we really focus on are is daily reports, like daily communication, setting things up to automate data transfer between us and our manufacturing partner, for example, instead of doing it monthly or or on longer time periods. And I mean, you're using data for fit and. I mean, that, that seems to me like when you're talking about things in a real-time perspective, I would imagine that once you get the fit right, you wouldn't have to do too much to it. Or is, is that, am I, am I incorrect in, in that kind of assumption? Well, I think there's, um, there's fit and there's size. So I think when we've identified a woman's size correctly, nothing else needs to be done unless she changes size. But an interesting statistic is that a woman changes her bra size six times in the course of her life. So she is changing size a lot. But if you have that right size, I think um, getting product to her is easy. I think developing fit takes time and is, it's a constant iteration. So it's not just like we've used data, we've designed product. It's a cycle. The more data you get, the better the fit, the better the design gets, and it goes in a cycle. So. Okay. And um, who's, using, uh, who's using data well at the moment, and how are they using it well? Maybe answer that. Um, that's actually a really good question. Um, I think that currently the ecosystem of like a different like fashion company uh, exists is like very fragmented in a way that eventually they are using data. Um, you do have companies like uh, Stitch Fix, for example, that are putting a lot of energy in like really building amazing recommendation engine. They have like 
armies of like data scientists um, where they try, like the business model is that they send you a box and then they put like those five items and they really try to personalize it. Um, next to this, in parallel, you really have like this whole optimization of the logistic chain. So companies like Farfetch, for example, are really like well known for that. And recently, they just announced that they are actually deploying the platform for like other uh, potential like brands. And then lastly, I would say it's all about user experience and trying to make the shopping experience as seamless as possible. And you have guys like List or Spring uh, that are quite well known on the market right now um, when it comes to that. Heidi, who would you who would you think about? Yeah, I think a, another good example, a little bit different, and I, I agree mm -hmm. with all of those as being great examples, is, is um, using customer data um, to help develop your brand. And so I think that in the past, what a lot of brands have done, especially fashion brands, is it's very much like, this is who we are, we're a fashion brand, and people either like it or don't. Um, and I think what's interesting is I think the world's changing and brands really need to listen to their customers and actually understand who your customer truly is because a lot of times it's not exactly who you think it is. And a great example of that um, is Timberland. They were struggling a few years ago, two years ago in the US, and they did a survey of their customers and what they actually learned is that their true customer base, the core was urban and they did athletics on the side. They were outdoorsy on the side. And that's not how they were marketing themselves. They were kind of competing against Patagonia and North Face and like the true outdoors brands. And so really what they did is they switched their marketing from their creative, their copy, photography, to really showcase this urban dweller who had was using Timberland for a hike on the weekend. Um, and it really um, propelled them forward and differentiated them from the competition. So I think taking a step back and actually using your customers to help you inform to inform you to make better decisions. And, um, to, to this point, I mean, I, I fully agree with you. Um, so one of the one of the things that I uncovered like earlier this year, so while I was like uh, working on these like fashion trends reports to try to understand what was actually like trending in the U.S., um, is that suddenly out of the blue we could see that everything related to emoji was really big in the U.S. Yeah, emoji pants, emoji shirts, you know, like all the things were really huge. And we start bringing those results and show it to like all those like big fashion brands, you know, and they were all very surprised. They were like, "Who the hell is doing that? You know, like why is emoji so big?" And I think that we realized that emoji was actually coming from the streets, mm -hmm. and it's really like a street style that was emerging. And that's why also, I mean, as a data analyst, this is like what I'm doing. Fashion is really very uh, fascinating as an industry because we really see this consumer that is talking. Um, with the industry and things are like, trends are emerging like this, yeah. Um, and I mean, do you ever see a point personality and um, something that comes from a human versus just data, I'd say. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I was actually at a data summit yesterday, you know, like uh, I'm here at the fashion summit, you know, and uh, there was this really great talk about like the five deadly sin of a data analyst. Um, and one of them is actually, uh, yeah, uh, arrogance, you know, like you, you also like need to be like humble when you are like pulling off data and you need to understand what's the limitation. What is your, the question that you are actually like really like asking and what's the limits of this question that you can answer? I do not believe that we will eventually like replace anything related to human creativity or human inspiration. I think that the point of data in the world of fashion is really like to help uh, taking better and more informed decisions. And where do you see the use of data going in the next five to ten years? Um, well, I think everyone talks about personalization, um, and it's been a hot mm -hmm. topic for, I don't know, the past five years. But actually, there's not that many brands that really do personalization well. And if you think about it, every person in this room is unique. You know, your preferences are unique. Um, the way you'd like to shop and interact with a brand is unique. And so I think a core part of where the industry is going is identifying not just segments of people who seem to be the same, but actually down to the individual customer level 
who are unique, unique individuals and, and what, um, what do they want and try to create those very individualized, tailored experiences. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a good question. I mean, I, I think we will eventually, like, uh, like a lot of industries, like what happened in music or what happened like in movies, um, the, the revolution that is like happening with data will help actually empower uh, designers and will help empower like maybe like smaller brands uh, because today the barriers that you have, the barriers of entry are actually like being pulled down, you know, like anybody has the possibility to eventually like uh, design something and then put it on Etsy, you know, um, or Shoptic, which is also a really like huge platform right now promoting like young designers. So I think that we are merging more towards like this, this direction in general. Okay. And, um in terms of development and product development, product development cycles, do you think that's speeding up with the use of data? A hundred percent. And I mean, what, yeah. what sort of what sort of speeds are you, are you looking at? Um, well, I mean, I think you see it speeding up in a few different ways. I mean, Zara is an amazing example of a retailer that's literally changes changed the face of how we think about fast fashion and supply chain innovation. And there's other, um, you know, there's other brands that are trying to approach um, different sectors in the same way. And I think that's that's in essence what we're trying to do with bras and underwear. So, yeah, and personalization, like yeah, yeah exactly. That's also like the big thing. Um, like Burberry was very famous. Like they launched this like whole trench coat that you can build on their websites uh, mm -hmm. directly, and you can have your own trench coat that nobody else has, you know. Uh, Nike was really big at doing this with the shoes also. And I think that's also something that uh, data can uh, influence and you will see more and more like customized, very personalized uh, product that users can work on. And Heidi, one last question. Um, as a company that uses data very heavily and has used it very well, um, what advice and what sort of challenges have you faced as a company when you've, when you've, as you've taken on this approach? I mean, I think the key thing for us is making sure that people understand how we um, how we use data and even the images that someone takes. So when I say that a woman takes images, uh, photos on her phone, we never take ownership of those. All the calculations are done natively on her device. They're not even saved on your camera, your camera roll. So I think that if you're if you're gathering data from your customer, you need to be very upfront about what you're gathering, how you're using it, and be totally transparent and make it in a way that somebody can actually understand, not some like legal jargon that doesn't make any sense, in order for people to feel very comfortable um, about what a company's doing and how they're helping the end user. Yeah. Uh, great stuff. Uh, I'd like to thank Heidi and Olivier for their time, and thanks for having us today. Thank you. Thanks.